Last thing I wanted to get to on this episode of the show went through and I tried to rank this as, uh, you know, almost like an all conference type team, but I did this factoring in just the incoming transfers to the SEC this season. And, you know, this list could get blown up here in a couple months because after spring football, you got to think that, uh, you know, the transfers are, all right, you know, as crazy as it seems, the portal is probably going to heat up once again after spring football. So there could still be some big time players on the move. But with uh, spring football just around the corner, it looks like for now that uh, the transfer portal carousel, if you will, has slowed down. We have a good idea of, you know, all the major players that are headed to the SEC via the transfer portal have been made at this point in time. and. Taking that all into consideration, pre-spring, here is my all-SEC transfer team, and we got to start with the most important position on the field, quarterbacks. There's a couple of good ones here moving into the SEC or switching SEC teams, but the one that stands out to me, been teasing it already, Spencer Rattler from Oklahoma to South Carolina. This was uh, an easy one for me after taking a deep dive on Spencer Rattler and everything that he accomplished at Oklahoma. Uh, you know, he gets my nod here at the quarterback position with, uh, you know, I still need to do a deep dive on Jackson Dart. You got to think that uh, he's the front runner to, to be Ole Miss starting quarterback next season, but he's still going to have to battle Luke Altmeyer. whereas Spencer Rattler, I think, is, hell, they, they may as well name him the starting quarterback right now at South Carolina. I don't believe they've done that officially yet, but we're just wasting time waiting for that one. Uh, and then the other two honorable mentions, I'm calling these Max Johnson jumping from LSU to Texas A&M and Zach Calzada from Texas A&M to Auburn gave each of those players consideration. But, you know, their path to the starting role, not as concrete as Spencer Rattler. I think Zach Calzada, you know, has got an excellent chance to start at Auburn. But, hell, we don't even know who his quarterback coach and his offensive coordinator be so I couldn't in good conscience give him the nod and then there Max Johnson you know that is going to be quite the battle this offseason and if if he if I knew he was going to be the starting quarterback I'd give him some consideration here I think he's going to be a lot better at A&M than he was at LSU you know that was just such a train wreck last year with uh just everything going on so Max Johnson I think brighter things are ahead but just don't know if he's going to be the starting quarterback just yet for them Aggies next season. Now, moving on to the running backs, this was kind of easy for me. Jameer Gibbs, Georgia Tech to Alabama, number three in the country in all-purpose yards last season on a terrible Georgia Tech team. Now he's going to be surrounded by all kinds of talent. I think he's going to have a huge year for the Crimson Tide. So Jameer Gibbs would be my number one running back. Number two, Zach Evans from TCU to Ole Miss. And I've said it many a times, you listen to this show, you know, Lane Kiffin's got this reputation as, uh, you know, a quarterback guru, which he deserves, but his system is uh, far more balanced than most people give him credit for. Ole Miss is, they led the uh, SEC in rushing in 2020. They were near the top of the list here in 2021. And with lacking a lot of options at the running back position, Zach Evans, He may very well lead the SEC in rushing next year, given how often he's going to get the rock in Oxford. So I think those that's got to be my one, two at the running back position via this, uh, this all transfer portal team. But I did have a couple guys here on my list here, Christian Beal Smith and Lavoisier Carroll, both coming into South Carolina could certainly see both of them making a big impact for the Gamecocks, but I think they're going to split carries. And uh, I certainly even think Carroll he may be a year or two away from making a, a large impact for the Gamecocks, but you know a lot of promise for him. And then how about Nathaniel Pete, Stanford of Missouri? All Eli Drinkwitz does is take these uh, little-known running backs and turn them into star players. So would not stun me in the least if Pete this time next year is uh, one of the better running backs in the SEC East. And one other guy, I didn't want to forget this guy, Montreal Johnson, Louisiana to Florida. If he's following Billy Napier, you know, that tells you all you need to know about what Billy Napier thinks this guy can do. Now he's bringing him to Florida. 
I don't know if he's going to be the start running back or anything, but he's going to know the system. He's going to have a heads up all the running backs on the Gators current roster. So Montreal Johnson, one to watch there for the Florida Gators, making that jump from the Sun Belt to the SEC. Ain't going to be easy though. And then offensive line, hey, similar theme here because we get two Louisiana players jumping to Florida. You know, Cyrus Torrance, who Chris Lowe's got as a potential All-American here. And we know Florida's got issues when it comes to talent and overall depth on the offensive line. So I think his path to the field is very clear, as well as Cameron Waits, again, another Louisiana player, following Billy Napier to Florida. So these two players, their path to the field is very, very clear. And how about uh, Tayshawn Manning, Auburn transfer to Kentucky. They're already hyping this guy up as a uh, day one starter there for the big blue wall up in Lexington. So I got to put him on the list. Gerald Mincy, who I, you know, he didn't play a ton at Florida, but Tennessee desperately needs help at uh, offensive tackle. And I could certainly see Mincy factoring in. I'm, you know, I'm not penciling him in immediately as a starter, but anytime you get uh, a start, a potential starter out of the transfer portal, I'm going to put you on this list. And then two honorable mentions, you know, you might as well throw these guys on the list if you want a whole offensive line here, but Miles Frazier and Traymond Shorts, both to LSU. The only reason I don't have them as firm on this list, coming from FIU, coming from ETSU, respectively, you know, that's a major, major step up in competition. So can they handle that immediately? I believe both these guys got uh, a couple years to play. So, you know, the LSU may be thinking the long term with these guys, but hell, LSU's got several spots available to uh, incoming transfers on that offensive line. So don't be surprised if Frazier and Shorts starting in Baton Rouge next season. Now, when it comes to tight ends, both these guys make the list because they're too good to keep off. Michael Trigg from Southern Cal to Ole Miss, and then Austin Stogner with coming with Spencer Rattler to South Carolina from Oklahoma. I've, I've been watching Oklahoma as a, uh, to get ready for uh, Spencer Rattler, but I've been impressed with Austin Stogner too. I mean, he's huge. I didn't realize how big he is. He's about six foot five, 240 pounds, and he's got some moves to him. So I think, uh, you know, he's going to be your starting tight end for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And I think the same thing of Michael Trigg for uh, the Ole Miss Rebels. So these look to be two instant impact players and uh, probably the two best players, two best tight ends in the transfer portal headed to the SEC. Now, how about the receiver position? This was a little bit harder with so many guys coming in to the SEC or, or transferring in at the receiver position. But my list starts and ends with Jermaine Burton from Georgia to Alabama. And, you know, he, he certainly had his moments at Georgia, but didn't quite live up to all his massive potential. And I think that's why he's going to Alabama to tap into all that massive potential. I mean, he could be, you know, one of the stars of the SEC next season with Bryce Young throwing him the ball, similar to Jamison Williams. Now, they're certainly different players, but, you know, at this time last year, Jamison Williams was similar mold, you know, made some plays for Ohio State, but just wasn't the star player. Come to Alabama, hell, he looked like arguably the best receiver in the country. So can Jermaine Burton make a move like that? I think it's possible next season. So I, th I think Jermaine Burton – uh, you know, he's going to be in for a huge year there in Tuscaloosa. Now, how about this name? Jadon Hazelwood, Oklahoma to Arkansas. They're going to be looking for a number one receiver in Fayetteville next season. I think the name at the top of that list, Jadon Hazelwood, the former five-star, one of the most talented prospects in his uh, recruiting cycle, made some plays for Oklahoma. But, of course, you know, with the whole new coaching staff looking for a fresh start, you know, I don't think he's going to have a much better option than playing than making plays for K.J. Jefferson and company. So I think Hazelwood is uh, a potential huge impact player for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And Kentucky got them a couple receivers via the transfer portal. Javon Baker, former Alabama receiver, I think uh, you know he would be high on this list for a lot of people. But I'm going with Tavion Robinson, Virginia Tech to Kentucky. 113 catches, 1,555 yards, nine touchdowns in three seasons at Virginia Tech. And I couldn't for the life of you tell you who in the hell Virginia Tech's got at quarterback since Hendon Hooker jumped to Tennessee. So Robinson makes a ton of sense 
for a breakout type candidate for Kentucky with uh, everything they lost this offseason at the receiver position. I think there's an outstanding chance that Robinson leads the Kentucky Wildcats in catches. And then one more guy made my list here at the receiver position. And this is a name I think very, very few people in the SEC know now. I think they're going to know it by the end of the season. Antoine Wells from James Madison to South Carolina. This guy just completely tore up the record books down there at James Madison. And he did it as a true freshman and as a redshirt freshman. Two seasons, 116 catches, 1,853 receiving yards, 21 touchdowns. Two seasons, Wells did that. So, you know, I'm not saying he's going to come into the SEC and be gangbusters, but considering South Carolina needs receivers to step up, and now they got themselves a potentially elite quarterback, I think Wells is in prime, prime position to be one of the biggest breakout stars in the SEC next season. Now, moving to the defensive line, again, this was a tough one because there's a lot of defensive linemen move around, moving around in the transfer portal this offseason. But my list starts with Tyrone Truesdale from Auburn to Florida. This was a guy that uh, got dismissed from Auburn leading up to the season opener there at Auburn. And this was the guy that, uh, you know, that it's alleged that he asked Brian Harson for some time off. And he said, well, hell, I'll give you all the time off you can use. You're off the damn team. And that was a mistake because he was arguably the the best interior defensive lineman that the Auburn Tigers had. Could have used him last year. Now he's going to be playing for Billy Napier and company in Gainesville. So he's got, you know, something to prove there in Gainesville. And I think he'll do it next year. So Tyrone Truesdale, one to watch. Makai Wingo made all SEC freshman team at Missouri, but he's transferred now to rejoin his former High school head coach down at LSU. LSU needs some players to step up on that defensive line. I think Wingo's poised to make an impact. And then I love this guy at defense. Hated him at tight end. J.J. Pegues, Auburn to Ole Miss. That's another one. Ole Miss needs players to step up on the defensive line. I love the potential of J.J. Pegues. And it's understandable him leaving his uh, position coach left for Clemson. So, I think Ole Miss got them a real winner there in the the Mississippi native Piggies. And then one other one for Ole Miss, Jared Ivey from Georgia Tech to Oxford. So Ole Miss, you know, you're seeing them on a lot of these, uh, you know, the winners of the transfer portal list. And it's because of, you know, players like this, players like Michael Trigg and Jackson Dart. I mean, Ole Miss, hell, they cleaned up here in the transfer portal and, Two other ones here, honorable mention on the defensive line. Darian Henry Young, Ohio State to Kentucky. Only reason I didn't put him on the list, Kentucky is so deep right now at the defensive line position. I think Henry Young will make an impact, but I just don't think it'll be as large as some of these other players. And then Landon Jackson, LSU to Arkansas. Just haven't seen enough of him to to put him on this list. But, you know, I think – Arkansas has got a need there on the defensive line. So I think Jackson's going to make an impact there for the Razorbacks. But I think he's got four years left to play. So I think his impact is more down the line than it is necessarily next season. Now, that's not to be said for the linebacker crew here. It starts with Drew Sanders, former Alabama five-star recruit. Now he's playing in Fayetteville. And he was in line to potentially start for the Crimson Tide Last season, got a little banged up in camp. Now he's off to play for Michael Scher and Barry Odom there at Arkansas. I think he is primed for a huge, huge breakout season in Fayetteville. Drew Sanders, linebacker crew. Tyron Hopper from Florida, Missouri. Again, you're going to be playing for Blake Baker, who is outstanding at developing linebackers. We've seen it, just saw it last year at LSU, seen it at Miami as well. Tyron Hopper, I think, is in prime position. Missouri needs the linebackers to step up. And, hell, they got his cousin Ty- Tyrone Hopper. I mean, we could throw him on the list, too. He didn't quite make it for me because Troy Brown from Central Michigan to Ole Miss, that guy is going to cap my all-SEC fr- transfer linebacker crew. 212 tackles, good Lord. 32 and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks, five interceptions at Central Michigan. Now he's coming to an Ole Miss defense that, hey, they utilize these transfers 
excellently last season, but some of those guys are off to the NFL, so they've got holes to fill, and uh, they did a hell of a job. Troy Brown, many SEC programs wanted him. Now moving to the corners, got to start the list with Eli Ricks, of course. Former freshman All-American, jumping from LSU to Alabama. He's in line to start day one in Tuscaloosa. What more needs to be said? If you're starting at Alabama, you are one hell of a player. And uh, Eli Ricks was already one of the best in the country. Now he'll be able to showcase that once again, playing it against his former rival. And uh, But you know, they did a great job replacing him in Baton Rouge. Jerick Bernard from Oklahoma State, former Big 12, all Big 12 selection, had 195 tackles, 24 passes defended, two interceptions during his outstanding career at Oklahoma State. You got to think Bernard's going to slide into the starting lineup here at LSU with so many losses. Uh, Brian Kelly and company really had to hit this transfer portal hard for secondary players. And uh, this is just one of the first of many we're going to get to here. And that's Dwight McLaughlin jumped from LSU to Arkansas. So, you know, the trade that was made a couple weeks ago, I love this one for Arkansas. McLaughlin's got a ton of potential making plays. He was forced into action early in his career, and he didn't disappoint. I think Arkansas got them a, a really talented corner with several years to play here, so I think he makes an impact. And then one guy we've not yet seen what he can do on the field, but he's got massive, massive potential. And if not for the log jam there at Georgia, and maybe you know they had the, some incoming transfers themselves. I don't know. He must have not taken too kindly to this. I know he got banged up. But Jalen Kimber, jumping from Georgia to Florida, as long as he's healthy, I think he's going to start for the Florida Gators next season. And playing in that defense for Corey Raymond, I think he's going to do big thing for the Gators. I think Georgia's going to regret letting him get out there. Now, last but not least here, the safeties. Again, I said I'd get to it here. But uh, Joe Fouché. The Louisiana native leaving Arkansas for LSU after racking up 230 tackles, four interceptions, 12 passes defended for the Razorbacks. Now he's going to end his career back home for them LSU Tigers. That was a hell of a pickup for Brian Kelly and company. And then last but not least here, Latravius Brini, former starter for the Georgia Bulldogs, now, he went to Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, Arkansas lost guys, but they found ways to replace them as well. He was a solid safety for the Georgia Bulldogs. Now he's off to Arkansas to kind of fill some holes there for the Razorbacks. And, uh, you know, so there's my all-SEC transfer team. And these things could be, like I said, this transfer team, all SEC transfer team could look a lot different here at the end of spring practice when we see, you know, how much moving and shaking there is after spring ball. But I think we anticipated a lot of transfers after spring last year, didn't quite get it. So, you know, I'm holding judgment here. Certainly you see a number of these programs, they're leaving a couple spots open for if the right player comes available, they'll grab them. But, uh, you know, that'll just be something we have to monitor all off season in the SEC. That's one of the weird things about the portal. It never closes, and there's constantly movement. I kind of wish uh, – I think college football would be better off if they if they had windows. I think I've talked about that before. But I just don't care for the transfer portal during the season. I don't like it during camps either. But any other time of the year, I think you, you open that sucker up, and we'll see what happens again after spring football. There should be some more movement. Maybe I have to update this list. But for now – I think these are the, the transfers that are going to make the biggest positions at each position here in the SEC.